So uh, that leads immediately into Brian Lawler versus BG James. Gentlemen, oh. the floor is yours. <laughs> I have my favorite moment, but go ahead. Why don't you just recap it? All right. So uh, they're brawling on the floor, which is the story of the second half of the show. Yes. In the middle of the fight, Brian Lawler climbs the announce desk, takes the house mic, and asks all the fans if anyone has seen April. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, BG James grabs him. He tries to do a backdrop on the floor. It turned into a dead eye. uh, Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I don't know what they were trying, dude. He lifted him up, and it didn't look like he was trying to do a backdrop. It no. looked like he lifted him up and maybe was going to do an Alabama slam. Yes. But he lost his balance and fell backwards, and and Brian Lawler landed on his fucking face and neck on the cement. I thought for sure this guy was done. And the ref runs over to check on him, and he's just he's grabbing the back of his head. Ah! But then he goes right back into character. And he starts doing all these wacky faces and everything like that. And he just gets right back in the ring. And they keep going. I don't know how this guy survived. It was amazing. Yes. So they're doing this match. And uh, James goes to the pump handle slam. Brian uh, Lawler avoids it and hits a super kick. And uh, it's funny because Brian Lawler was not a great technical wrestler. But did he not have the best super kick in the entire world? It looked was really good. awesome. <laughs> so he goes up top for whatever. But then out comes Six Pack in April. <laughs> and you recall, okay. a few weeks back, Six Pack said, if you beat me, maybe I'll let you watch. Mm-hmm. I laughed my ass off because <laughs> Lawler goes up top for the hip hop drop. And he's standing on the top rope. Out comes Six Pac and April. Okay? Six Pac grabs her and they start having sexual intercourse. <laughs> Right there on the stage. They are just, he's eating her face. He's grabbing her ass. I mean, they're they're going all the way there on the stage. Because it's TNA, you see. And they cut back, and Brian Lawler is standing on the top rope. And he's doing, he's doing his Brian Lawler face. He can't believe his eyes! His eyes are wide! Ah! And I'm not sure if, like, he was supposed to be crotched. But uh, he doesn't get crotched. He just stands there. And they keep having sex. And he keeps watching them. And now, like, Xbox, I mean, he's, you know, he's he's pretty deep in there. And, uh, me. <laughs> and this guy's still standing on the fucking top rope. And I don't know if it was a rib or if somebody forgot or whatever. It was a rib but already. finally, finally, he's like, I just got to crotch myself. And he just jumps and crotches himself on the top rope and falls into the ring. I died at this whole preposterous fucking segment. And his selling of being crotched. Ah! I, mean, I can't even do it, dude. I can't do it. You got to go watch this show. Yeah, not go watch me. Brian Lawler's performance in this match. He's so over it. He doesn't care. Fuck me, dude. I was dying during this segment. This was a highlight of the show by miles. <laughs> it did not occur to me that BG I may mean, have forgotten the spot and Lawler had to improvise that. Dude, I thought- and the best part is, like, th- when, he, when he's doing the face on the top rope, they do, like, a shot like you're watching right now in video. It's just, like, from here. He's going, ah! And then, right when he has to crotch himself, they cut to the fucking hard cam. So you see the guy on the top rope, and he goes... Oh, and jumps and crotches himself and falls off. The fucking perfect, the perfect angle to show you that he did it on per- I would, Oh, God. Yeah, he didn't swing his arms. He didn't try to catch his balance. No, no. he just, no, just crotched himself. <laughs> See, I, I saw it as he was like, he forgot where he was, was taking a step towards the stage and crotched himself on the top rope. But now. They should have told the story that he was up there and just thought, I will never have sex with this woman again. I don't need these nuts. I'll just jump on the top rope with them. So, as I was starting to say, Colin says it's almost DDP in the machine from Thunder. 
Almost. 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 DDP in the machine was a thousand times funnier, if that's even yeah. possible. Because, beyond, well, for many reasons. Ah! Yes, the machine had the scream. Yes. <laughs> machine screaming and was a big part of it. And he fucking tried to do a coast-to-coast -coast crotching. <laughs> he jumped three quarters of the way across the fucking ring and crotched the top rope. So, Six Pack <laughs> said, uh, if you beat me in the match, maybe I'll let you watch me bang your girlfriend. And it turns out he is a man of his word. Yes. <laughs> he brought him her and banged her in front of Lawler. What a gentleman. Yeah. So, uh... There's a, um, there's a moment in that match when, um, Lawler is whipped into the, uh, railing. And as most guys do, they just run into it and they go over it. Lawler ran towards it, <laughs> stopped, literally stopped right in front of it, and then dropped to his knees, and then went into it. <laughs> I laughed so hard. It's like... Everything he did in this match, everything he did... It was just amazing. He was amazing in this match. Hmm. He yes. was a cartoon. I wouldn't say amazing. Yes, he was. When a, when a living man is an animated cartoon, that's amazing. I don't care what you say. So all these assholes are laughing at this poor heartbroken guy. <laughs> Including us. <laughs> just, just had his guts ripped out and stomped in front of the entire world. He's weeping, and he has... I mentioned Sonny Siaki has one facial expression for everything. Brian Lawler has 800 expressions for crying. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, eventually he goes to the back of poor He bastard. literally had his bottom lip out and it was quivering. Yes. He was like he was bawling. It was, oh my gosh. It was amazing. So, over the top. so this leads to a, uh, Six Pack versus AJ Styles. Six Pack cuts a promo. It is a disgrace, he says. The shits! What an X Division title match ends in a DQ. So this is no DQ, but he warns Mortimer Plumtree, if you get involved, you'll get your ass whipped. Every promo that X-Pac cut, he just came off as the most sincere, <laughs> friendly guy. Even when he's apologizing for, for uh, you know, what happened. Didn't he apologize for what happened with April? I forget what he said. Uh, later, yes. Later, later he did, yeah. yeah. After the but it was, actually, it was actually this promo where, like, he comes out and the people are, like, booing him. And I can't figure out why. And uh, I guess maybe it was because he, you know, did that to April or anything. But anyway, he goes, uh, yeah, you can boo me, you know, whatever. And then he explains that, uh, you know, this is horrible. Like, uh, we had a great match, and it was just a DQ, and you paid good money for a finish. It's bullshit to not get a finish. And I'm like, God damn, he's right. And so he, uh, he offered to do it again. No DQ. No DQ. And he warns Mortimer Plum to not to get involved. So this match, the actual wrestling involved, was awesome. Yeah, because X-Pac is such a great worker. Yes. Yep. And what's funny is, like, I was reading the uh, the uh, board, and, you know, people were like, I think it was some, some people in the chat, too. You know, they, they watched and they went, my God, I never realized what a great worker X-Pac was. And I was like... Did he really not show much when he was in WWF there at the end? Because this fucking guy is great. Now, granted, he wasn't able to do matches like this because they had a very specific way of, of you know, doing matches and such. But, you know, the first time I ever saw him was in Global. They have great matches with Jerry Lynn. Mm -hmm. And then, God damn, he was so great with AJ Styles. Last week and this week. He was great. Now, to put that in context, according to Dave, uh, Six Pac dislocated his hip early mm. in this match. You know what? And gutted out. You know what? I saw that spot. It was uh, it was when he got thrown crotch first into the post because he mm. took it and he fell on the ground. And I remember he he like he sold it weird. Mm. And I was like, did he fucking hurt his hip? And I just uh, in early in the show, uh, you know, uh, Jerry Lynn had talked about how he broke his pelvis or whatever. He had a cracked pelvis for six weeks or whatever he said. God. So it was really weird that Xbox sold like that. Well, it turns out he did. Yes. That sucks. And then he did the rest of this match. Yeah. Which was still an awesome match. Yes. So uh, he hit the X Factor, but Mortimer pulls the ref out of the ring. So Six Pack goes after Mortimer. AJ ends up accidentally, ex accidentally hitting Mortimer, knocking him off the apron. AJ goes to the Styles Clash. Six Pack gets the ropes. But then Brian Lawler runs down, breaks a glasses on the overpack's head. And AJ hits the clash and wins. And even then, I was like, okay, it's an ODQ match. And uh, this guy, is a, I understand why he's been at six-pack. So it's a fuck finish, but there's a reason for it. But then six-pack gets up. And he raises AJ's hand. Yes. You were the better man, he says, when you had that other guy hit me with a glass bottle. 
And then AJ don't care. AJ behind his back passes the belt to Lawler. Lawler uses the belt to hit a six back. And uh, that's all very, very wacky and kind of stupid. But the wrestling itself was so great, I don't even care. Well, I'm foolishly expecting a follow up. <laughs> This was completely different than the first match. The first match was just spot, 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 spot. And I think I said it last week, and it rings true this week. There was time to breathe in between the moves, and it made the match better. Ace Steel versus Jorge Estrada. So for those of you who wonder, the Flying Elvis storyline is just dead now. Uh, they, they, they no, told, they, they they said on commentary he's still looking for another Elvis. I, I, I should, uh, you're right, I misspoke. Yeah. The feud between Sonny Siaki and the Elvises is dead now. Sonny has moved on, the Elvises have moved on, there is no blow-off, there is no payoff, it's just done. So Ace comes out. I had forgotten that he's uh, managed by Mortimer Poultry right now. Mortimer did not come out with him. So they're out there doing stuff, and uh, they're working outside, and Priscilla, uh, Jorge's valet, gets in Ace's face, and so Ace throws her down. What a dick. I thought, man, what an asshole. I shouldn't do that. Even the announcer's like, you never do that to him. And he shouldn't, by the way, do that to him. And then they get in the ring, and suddenly Ace is making a comeback. Yeah, he's supposed to be the baby face. I, I was... Is he? Yes. <laughs> he was in this match. And then Priscilla, who had been thrown down, by the way, tripped him up, leading to Jorge getting the pin. And then Mortimer comes out. He's punching and slamming Priscilla, too. I don't know what the fuck's going on. This was that match that there was way too much going on, and they kept going 100 miles an hour, and it wasn't getting better. This match sucked. It was beating a woman for no reason. That's too. And they announced uh, that whole contest last week, uh, how they're going to do this worldwide search, and then apparently they did that over the week. I found Priscilla. No, see, they introduced her last week. She was, on, she was in the Battle Royal on episode one. Huh. Anyway. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.